just wanted to comment a little bit on today's first reading from the uh, uh, Acts of the Apostles. So notice that St. Paul, he's kept in prison for a two-year period, and, and I think it was a house arrest, um, so, but, but nevertheless, he, he wasn't free. And then he wants to appeal later on to the emperor. And part of the significance of all of this is not just recounting what happened to St. Paul and the steps leading up to his final execution, which is significant, but it's also indicating that this was a public event in the, in the, uh, amongst the Roman, the Roman officials, right? In other words, if we look at the history of the writings of the Roman officials, it confirms what the Bible says. So in other words, it can be used as verification of the events that took place concerning St. Paul and the dispute that he had with the Jews, basically about the resurrection of Christ. So all of that is recorded in Roman history, which can be accessed. So it's kind of noteworthy. In today's gospel reading, our Lord asked St. Peter three times, do you love me? And, and the first time he says, um, do you love me more than these? Right? And if you recall, St. Peter had professed his, his love and devotion to our Lord, claiming that he would lay down his life for him. And then when our Lord is arrested and St. Peter ends up denying him three times. So this three times affirmation of his love is intended to, in some sense to counteract his three times denial of our Lord. But, but there's more to it than that. So when Peter responds, he responds with great humility. He doesn't just say, yes, Lord, you know I love you, I'll lay down. He, he, you know, he doesn't say, I love you and I'll lay down my life for you. He says, yes, Lord, I do love you. You know that I love you. You know that I love you, but you also know that I am weak. I am capable of betraying you, denying you three times, but I still love you. And it's a kind of reminder to us of our fallen human nature. So yes, we profess our love of God, we profess our, our willingness to follow God, but we too have a fallen human nature. And sometimes we fall, we fail. Sometimes we might actually deny our Lord. And the idea is that we repent of that as did St. Peter. Very often people become very discouraged and they stop praying or they just, they might even abandon their faith completely. So we should never become discouraged. And when we think of Judas Iscariot, that's exactly what happened to him. He became too discouraged. He gave in to despair. He committed suicide. So we always have hope and we always have to trust in God's love for us. So our Lord, by asking him three times, he's really giving him an opportunity to, to kind of um, save face, to, to reaffirm his commitment to Christ. But notice that Christ doesn't just forgive him he kind of reaffirms, not kind of, but he reaffirms the, the role of St. Peter as the head of the apostles, as the head of the church, the visible head. So Christ is the ultimate head, so, so the, the popes are just the, the vicars of Christ. They're called to uh, proclaim what Christ proclaims. So this is why Christ says to him, feed my lambs, tend my sheep, Right, so how, does, how is St. Peter going to feed the lambs? How is he going to feed the sheep? He's, he needs to nourish them by the word of God. He needs to nourish them with the word of God as well as the sacraments. And how does he tend them? By governing the church. So a very clear indication that he's called to be the head of, of, of the visible head of the church. Now, I, I wanted to draw your attention to to a very significant line at the end of this discourse that our Lord has with St. Peter. He mentions, you know, he talks about how he's going to die. And then after this, Jesus said to him, follow me. And it's what our Lord said to him at the very beginning of his public ministry when he first called St. Peter, come follow me, right? But in this, in this occasion, when he says, follow me, especially because he has just alluded to the kind of death he would undergo, he's saying, follow me even in suffering. Follow me even in regards to death, dying in a way similar to how I died. So 
you know, what should we take away from this? Well, the invitation to follow our Lord is extended to all of us. And very often when we think of following our Lord, okay, we think of our prayers, whatever, right? But are we, are we willing to follow our Lord even to death? We may not be called to that, that's true, but I think it's, it's a good question to consider. What if, you know, what if persecution became so severe that in order to remain a Christian, you may be severely persecuted, maybe even killed? Would you persevere in following our Lord? The other thing that we ought to ponder based on this gospel reading is, is that question of our Lord. Do you love me? Do you love me? And of course, we all like to say yes, but what if we were asked, do you love me more than these? No, okay, granted, we're not called to be the head of the apostles or the head of the church, but, but we are called to have very great love. And, and ideally, the greater the love we have, the better off we are and the higher our, our place of, of glory in heaven will be. So we should desire the highest ability to, to love God. And if we truly love God, we will do what God wants. What does God want for us? Yes, personal holiness. But, you know, when he, when he spoke to St. Peter, he, he didn't say, okay, you love me. Well, be holy, therefore. That's not what he said. He said, tend my sheep, feed my sheep. So we're not just called to live for ourselves. We're not just called to become holy for ourselves. We're called to become holy for the sake of others. So in following our Lord, professing our love of our Lord, we also need to do what we can to make the kingdom of God present here on earth, beginning with ourselves, but extending to everyone around us. In other words, fighting against injustices in society. You know, promoting good in society, uh, proclaiming the faith in society, looking for opportunities to share the faith with others. So in, in, in some sense, we are all called to tend the sheep and to feed the lambs because, you know, some people say, oh, I'm not my brother's keeper. Well, yes, you are. Because what you do or fail to do is going to affect your brother or your neighbor. In fact, it's going to affect everyone around you. And this is why it's so important that we realize this and do what we can to live our lives the way that God calls us to. Just a couple of uh, announcements. So today, this evening, we will have the Living Rosary at 6 p.m. Everyone is invited to participate in that. Because we have the Living Rosary at 6 p.m., we will not have adoration in the evening. And tomorrow morning at 10.30 in the parish hall, there will be someone from the Legion of Mary giving a talk on the Miraculous Medal. Everyone is invited to attend. And it's just kind of an introduction and people can share their, or, uh, share their input. Uh, you can ask questions. So it's a time for discussion. Also after the talk, there will be some light refreshments. And in the evening, tomorrow, Saturday evening after the 5 p.m. Mass, we have the um, outdoor Marian procession with the statue of Our Lady of Fatima, weather permitting around the church and around the school. And we will pray the rosary while doing that. So uh, just keep those things in mind.